the African Union Church was formerly a member of the Methodist Episcopal Church of Wilmington, Delaware. That church thought it proper to deny us the religious privileges guaranteed to us by the Word of God. So we quietly withdrew from said connection and erected a house where we could worship God according to the enlightened dictates of our consciences. Then, we thought we could have the rule of our church to make our own laws for ourselves, but we were not allowed to govern our own affairs. We then thought we had the power to refuse any we thought not proper persons to preach to us, but the station minister that was in Wilmington to preach told us plainly that we had no say, and he must be the entire judge of all things. For the sake of peace and love, and nothing but that, we soberly came away from that Methodist Episcopal Church body. All we wanted was peace, love, freedom, and nothing else. We established our own church, known and distinguished by the name of the Union Church of Africans, on September 7, 1813, to take charge of the spiritual affairs of our people. A year later, in August, we gathered on the first anniversary to celebrate our religious freedom in an assembly of love, peace, and freedom with our people by the dictates of the hand of our God and the Constitution of these United States, the Big Quarter. It's like a lot of history because as a child I was an August Courtney child and it was on French Street I will never forget family would be coming in on the trains and on the buses and they would start coming in on Friday at that time August Courtney was really on basically on Sunday and we were all so happy because Black people didn't stay in hotels and things like they do now back in the 50s and 60s. They stayed with their family. So our family would be coming in and my mom would be cooking and the cousins would be bringing box lunches so we'd have enough food to eat. And boy, we could not wait until Sunday. We would go from 4th Street to 16th Street, just walking up and down the street. We didn't know what we were doing. It was just August quarterly. It was a time for all the family to get together and, and just have a good time and be family and laugh. And they would tell the old time stories. We had no idea anything about Peter Spencer or August quarterly. It was, it was just wonderful. So in growing up and getting older and learning the history, of what we were celebrating, it just made it even better to know that we could continue to carry on this legacy over the years. We've been through urban renewal. We had to move from the old church into the new church and all of the different things that we have experienced. And, and the older I'm getting, the more I'm finally learning about Peter Spencer, his mission, it, 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 it's just a wonderful thing. August Quarterly, um, as a youngster growing up in the city of Wilmington, I can recall um, running with my friends up and down French Street, uh, eating uh, the cotton candy and <clears throat> being uh, uh, shooed away from discussions that adults were, were having. Uh, to me at that time, it was just a, uh, a festival, a uh, opportunity for people to come together and to enjoy themselves. I remember when I came to Delaware in 1960 and I got excited about August Quarterly and I learned about Peter Spencer and I 
was really beside myself to learn that we were in Delaware. We were the birthplace of the oldest African-American independent faith, organization of faith in the whole country. And at that time, August Quarterly was all downtown. It was just really uh, an expression of who we were, what our culture was, religious, our music, our eating, our singing, our feeling, our believing. I was so excited, and I'm still excited. Well, August Quarterly and Peter Spencer are probably best understood in the context of civil rights. I often refer to uh, Peter Spencer as the first civil rights leader. When he started the uh, Union Church of African Members in 1813, he was standing on the principles of the First Amendment that says that uh, people should have a right to be able to worship uh, with their own sense of self-determination. So he was standing on that First Amendment right, a civil right, uh, I would also say a human right. And then the following year, when he started the August Quarterly, uh, he was standing also on the First Amendment, uh, the right to peaceable assembly. So Peter Spencer was a man who really believed in uh, the words of the Declaration of Independence, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal and endowed by their God with a certain inalienable right to life, liberty, that's freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, Peter Spencer was a very brilliant man because not only did he develop churches, he developed schools and he gave people the idea that we had to progress through education and through religion, but he set up the first denomination in the nation of African-American religious freedom. Uh, and because they could not get religious freedom in the white churches who did not treat them again as equals in the churches. So they set up a denomination in 1813. And then he started the August Quarterly and bringing people together and showing our commonality and our connectiveness that should have happened and a celebration of freedom. When we're talking about the life and legacy of Peter Spencer, I think it's three things we need to consider. Uh, number one, he was a freedom fighter. Oftentimes when we're talking about freedom fighters, we omit Peter Spencer from that conversation. But Peter Spencer was a freedom fighter. Number two, I would say he was a prophetic leader. Uh, when we're talking about uh, a prophetic leader, we need to think about those truth tellers, uh, those individuals that would stand against injustices, and that's exactly who Peter Spencer was. Uh, and then I think the third part, particularly within the context of Delaware, but hopefully soon the nation, he was an iconic leader. August Quarterly uh, is a national religious festival of extreme importance uh, to African peoples across the country, but also to our community, our entire community here uh, across the city of Wilmington, Newcastle County, and of course the state of Delaware. Uh, it was started in 1814 by a, a great individual named Peter Spencer, born in, into slavery in Kent County, Maryland. Uh, he came to Delaware and found his freedom, I guess we can say, uh, and, and uh, became a great leader through the African Union Church. Uh, and set an example not just for, Afri for African peoples, but not just for African peoples, for all of us to understand our collective history, the beauty and extraordinary aspects of those history, and some of the injustice and ugly things about those, that history. Um, this 207th uh, celebration of August Quarterly is a celebration of self-determination. Uh, it's a celebration of a moment when Peter Spencer um, led uh, a, a committed, faithful, optimistic group of African-American worshipers out to begin their own um, incorporated space of worship and celebration. Um, August Quarterly is the oldest continuously celebrated uh, religious festival in our country and one that is rooted in our country's founding sin, which is the sin of slavery and of racism and it is a celebration of the steady march towards freedom. I think what it shows our country is 
that the kind of celebration in our faith by African Americans holding on to who they are in the faith means more than anything. I, it could not have lasted this long, Rev, had it not been a sure thing, had it not been God's will, um, had it not been for Peter Spencer, regardless of what anybody else said, to say, I know who I am in Christ, let me share this with you. And what I think August Quarterly does is shares with the community, actually people from all over, uh, they come in, it's not just our state, the people who come in from all over the country or wherever, <clears throat> it shares with them who we are in our faith, who we are as a people in our faith, who Christ has allowed us to be and how because of our consistency and because of our determination and because of our holding on to what he has given us, we can celebrate August quarterly like nobody else. In every sense, it means not only so much to me, but it means so much to the city of Wilmington, especially those of African descent. As I see it, we as African Americans need to know more about who we are and whose we are. This thing cannot be hidden anymore. It has to be told. It has to be told about this great history, how they struggle to get us to where we are. If, if we don't do and hold on to what God has chosen for us to do and God has given us to do, we're gonna lose it. We need to be reminded. We always need to be reminded of, of what we're about. We need to be reminded of the things that uh, gave us a sense of freedom. We need to be reminded of how we got our start. I think that when we, particularly as African Americans, when we celebrate these symbols of freedom uh, and, and African American uh, Christians, African Americans followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bronze Brother from Galilee, I really believe that it, it reminds us of how far God has brought us from. Uh, and we need to do that remembrance and that reminder year after year after year. We, the Muslim community, we want to be a, a part of this. We think that the whole world should know about uh, August Quarterly and Bishop Peter Spencer. And so we started with the what has become known as the African National Day of Assembly. And I think that people need to understand the continuation of celebrating us understanding cultural significance of our own selves, understanding the religious significance, because it began in Delaware, by Delawareans, people don't know that. Peter Spencer, Richard Allen, Absalom Jones, you can't beat them, they were the, the, the giants of religious freedom, and especially for African Americans. Where is this journey towards freedom taking us? Um, it's important to remember and to celebrate the history of August Quarterly, but it's also important to support its forward movement, to say that something that was born in the very depths of slavery, that was born of a, a yearning and a determination um, for freedom in the harshest time in American history, cannot end now. It has to be a march that continues. The August Quarterly has been and continues to be important particularly within our communities. When we reduced the August Quarterly uh, to just a week-long religious festival, we missed it, right? Uh, when Peter Spencer uh, really saw the importance of the August Quarterly, it wasn't just a week-long revival, but rather it was a gathering where our people, we can really think about our social, cultural, and political advancements. When we go now to 2020, what, what's important in our communities? Social, cultural, and political advancements. So yes, the worship is important. Yes, the fellowship is important. But most importantly, it is also a social justice movement so that we can really advocate for individuals that look like us in our communities. During this time of the pandemic, we have come together like glue. It, everything was up in the air. We didn't know whether we were going to have August Quarterly. We had planned to go left and this pandemic came and we had to go right and then we would have to make adjustments. 
which shows that we're a flexible people. That this virus, like so many diseases, so many bacteria, viruses, it attacks um, inequities. It finds communities that aren't able to go to the doctor, that aren't able to get medicine, maybe have a series of pre-existing conditions. And this disease, very clearly COVID, is more dangerous and more fatal in communities of color across our country and also right here in Newcastle County. And then so suddenly you have to step back and say, wait a second, this isn't just a health equity problem. It's a problem of economic equality, right? And then you talk more about economic equality. You say, wait a second, this is also an issue of educational inequality. And next thing, and maybe there's some criminal justice, criminal injustice in there as well. And you say, okay, as August quarterly, we can't, there's a temptation, right? To say, okay, let's just focus on health inequities this year. But from my perspective, what I've seen, you know, operating nearly 100 test sites now, COVID-19 test sites, seeing the results come in, is that it's all tied together. At my 84 years, I have never known anything else but difficult times. I, I've known lynchings. <laughs> I've known uh, Ku Klux Klan. I've known uh, uh, a, a demeaning uh, a person as an individual because of the color of their skin. Uh, I've known all the, uh, uh, and heard all the derogatory terms and whatever else you want to call us. But I also know, like Peter Spencer, regardless, we have survived, we have thrived, we have grown. It's a different kind of August quarterly this year. We won't be gathering in person. I will miss it deeply, but I will enjoy it virtually. But this also opens the doors digitally uh, for us to engage our whole country and the world. Thank you, and thank you for what you're doing.